cases are on the law, the treasure that we have received from the state of Florida, uh, the Department of Historical Resources. Anytime you find treasure off the coast of Florida, or any coastal state for that matter, the state likes to participate in what you find. And they will take at least 50% of it as belonging to them being found in state waters. And that is what you see is their share of treasure has been found along the coast here. Uh, these are some weapons that were found over the Gulf of Mexico with the shipwrecks there on the left here. And these are some uh, treasures from the Atosha. Now, some of you may have heard of the Atosha. That's the richest ship find to date. Many, many sunken treasures have been found. Mel Fisher and his crew found this uh, ship in 1985. He had looked for it for 16 years before he found it. Uh, this bar of silver in the window is one of over 600 bars that were found. This one weighs a little over 60 pounds. And in the process of mining this ship, the Atosha was one of seven ships that were headed back to Spain. They'd been down in Honduras and Peru, uh, robbing the Mayan Empire, and they were taking all that treasure back to Spain. When they rounded the tip of Key West, Florida on Sunday morning, September 6th, 1622, they ran directly into a hurricane. And as they did not have access to the Weather Channel back then, uh, they didn't get very much warning about these storms. So by the time they saw them developing on the horizon, it was usually too late and the winds drew them into the storm and because they were so heavily weighted down with treasure they sank rather quickly to the bottom of the sea. And they sat there for 350 years until Mel Fisher found this ship. Up until his death a few years back now, he had uh, salvaged more than $450 million from the Atosha. Uh, in the process of mining this ship, they found two other ships that were with the Atosha, although over these uh, number of years and all the storms, they've spread out now over about 50 square miles of the bottom floor of the ocean. Mm -hmm. uh, the Avena, an artifact from the Avena, and this is from a uh, gold finger, it's smaller than a bar of gold. This is 25 ounces of gold from the Santa Margarita that's found as well. And so they continue to dive these ships, and they estimate now that. By the time they bring up when they know to be down there will be well over one billion dollars in treasure in these ships. But I think 50% of that. No, I'm telling you. Not a bad no. deal, huh? This is some treasure from the uh, Taj Mahal over in this, they call it the Spice Route, the Indian and Red Sea Oceans, uh, a gold elephant with some uh, silver coins. Uh, the Great Mogul Empire uh, is uh, a lot of ships again in the main. Uh, main thorough there was, uh, was lost at sea. Oh, uh, again, uh, some primitive uh, hand grenades. These date back to like 1600s there. And this is a French sword handle and a British uh, barrel of a flintlock pistol that was found in some shipwrecks over uh, on the, uh, in the Gulf of Mexico there around Pensacola and Panama. Probably, uh, most probably around the period of uh, the American Revolution. Uh, the French actually helped out. In fact, I bet you didn't know the pirates helped win the American Revolution, did you? Uh, Jean Ribot and his brother, I'm not, I'm not Jean Ribot, uh, 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 Jean Pierre and his brother, uh, uh, Lafitte, helped to uh, uh, General Jackson in the Battle of New Orleans to help close out winning New Orleans back from the, uh, from the British because they were French. The British actually tried to get them to fight with them. But they didn't like the British. Anyway, they said, no, nah, we're going with Jackson. And so they blew the British away from uh, the Battle of New Orleans there. Now, in this case, there's some treasures from the Santa Margarita. Uh, these are some Spanish gold coins that were brought up. These are called double loons. If you look that up, that was the Spanish currency back then. Uh, this was about uh, $23. That's about a week's pay for a pirate back in the uh, 1600s. That's probably worth about... Uh, $1,500 today in today's gold market. You know, it depends on what is going. These are some pearls, and this is some more pieces of eight uh, coins that were uh, used for currency and trade back in the 16 and 1700s. Thomas II was one of the Red Sea Pirates. This is him here. We have his personal treasure chest. This belonged to Thomas II. He was from Newport, Rhode Island. And he created a navigational route for pirates called a Pirate Round. 
he would sail instead of following the masses from Port Royal, Jamaica, down into South and Central America, he would go through the Caribbean Sea around the Horn of North Africa into uh, the Red Sea and the uh, Indian Ocean, and he robbed the great Mughal empires, the Taj Mahal, West Indies, silk companies, and he was the third richest pirate on the top ten list, and he did some wealth and stuff. This was his personal treasure chest. It was 400 years old, and it weighs 150 pounds empty. So uh, <clears throat> the blacksmith that made this uh, was quite a craftsman, as you can see here. This is a, a work of art. The fact that it's lasted for 400 years speaks to the quality of his workmanship. One of the reasons it weighs so much is because of this uh, locking mechanism in the lid. The uh, keyhole in the front is cosmetic. That does absolutely nothing. If you look in the mirror, you'll see a hidden keyhole on top that actually activates this uh, mechanism to open the chest. And there's actually, if you have a, an eye for art, there are actually mermaids uh, uh, inscribed here on the uh, inside of this locking mechanism there on each of those rows. You can see the mermaids. So he did quite a job on this. Now, a lot of people ask me, why is it orange? Uh, I don't know exactly what the combination is, but that's a formula that they use to coat these uh, metal chests so they would not rust. Obviously, it, in seawater uh, and being out in salt air uh, would cause things to rust quite quickly. And this was a preservative, a solvent to avoid keep that from happening. Obviously, it worked pretty well. Uh, it's lasted for 400 years, but that's what that's the reason.